okay uh, good morning all yes, sir. Uh, yeah so i welcome all the participants to uh, this session which will be conducted by fronius india limited uh, so i welcome mr sasi anand partha sarthi who is looking after the segment management national in in uh, waam that is the uh, wire arc additive manufacturing and uh, mr gaurav choudhary uh, i welcome him he will be the panelist for question and answer session he is looking after the business development and uh, mr dilip uh, he is the application engineer so essentially uh, uh, my interaction with fronius india started Uh, when i uh, first i came to know from uh, professor sunil pande uh, who who was with the iit delhi and he specializes in welding technology he was also vice chancellor of sant longowal institute and uh, i came to know that fronius uh, organized some academic workshop at gnu Uh, then i interacted with gorav uh, we planned something that uh, this workshop can be organized at iilm as well and then later on i uh, i found that uh, the uh, fronius has a welding center of excellence at ajay kumar gar college then they were organizing one one day workshop there so i uh, took some students from our second year third year there and i participated in that Uh, workshop where uh, uh, fronius uh, demonstrated uh, both theory and practical and they were uh, they demonstrated some highly advanced welding setups uh, with with practical demos and it was uh, indeed a very good exposure for me as well so that that was the uh, interaction or journey with uh, fronius so far and i hope that in future uh, this journey will continue okay so now i uh, hand over to mr partha sarthi so he can just start this and the students can keep on typing the question in the chat box uh, so gorav you can uh, just uh, have a look at the questions and uh, whenever you find convenient you can just answer the question so thank you very much and also uh, i uh, introduce my co-host uh, my colleague mr ranjan he is also the program leader with me uh, in this summer program on uh, 3d printing in manufacturing and technology so ranjan is the head of department of civil engineering and i am looking after the mechanical and automobile department and my colleagues mr shatrugan mr gorav naseem ankita and abhishek are here so thanks to all okay sir you can you can start thank you uh, dr shiv sharma very good morning to you all i hope you are able to hear me uh, uh, i just wanted to check yes sir yes sir yeah thank you uh, thank you dr shiv sharma ji and uh, on behalf of uh, fronies india i extend a very warm welcome uh, to all the participants uh, from various uh, colleges and also the universities i would also thank uh, iilm institute uh, uh, that is uh, the academy of uh, higher learning uh, dr shiv sharma who has taken uh, efforts to organize this uh, particular program and i also thank uh, dr ranjan uh, who is also there uh, who is also uh, in charge of civil engineering uh, who is also interested uh, and uh, assisting uh, the entire uh, Uh, group uh, i would like to uh, also thank uh, my colleagues uh, uh, mr uh, gaurav choudhary uh, who is the business development uh, head uh, for uh, the uh, north and east uh, is also there with me and i will also thank uh, mr dalit kumar who has taken efforts uh, to coordinate for uh, this program i hope uh, and i wish that uh, this program goes uh, well uh, in the days to come also and our association will also continue to grow so with this uh, small introduction uh, i would like to get into the uh, presentation straight away and uh, i will move on to the slides 
wherein uh, you will be able to see uh, the slide uh, about uh, the company one or two slides i would like to tell about uh, the company fronies india which is founded uh, uh, by one mr uh, gunter fronies you can see a small circle uh, a black and white image in which uh, mr gunter fronies is seen there uh, in a picture and uh, the company was started uh, in year 1945 in a place called uh, wells in austria so uh, today uh, we are actually led by a team of uh, youngsters and also the granddaughter of uh, mr uh, gunter fronius madam uh, elizabeth tengelmer uh, straub she is the uh, head of uh, the company she is the ceo the chief uh, financial officer of the company and uh, she is ably assisted by uh, a team of youngsters uh, Uh, in the field of uh, manufacturing uh, then in the field of uh, corporate services and also in the supply chain management so this is some uh, brief overview about uh, the company which started in 1945 and moving on to the next slide uh, which is one of the important slides which you can see in front of you wherein uh, on the top you will be able to understand uh, there are more than 1264 patents have been granted for fronius for various uh, processes for the ip whatever we have uh, generated and uh, we have registered more than 1264 so you can understand uh, about the company's uh, r and d activities which is going on uh, across the globe you can see the various small small circles which are seen in the world map you will be able to see uh, uh, the places uh, uh, starting from left uh, from the americas uh, to the europe uh, to the china gulf australia and also to uh, the far east and uh, you will be able to see uh, there is uh, one detail about the 75 year the 75 years of uh, uh, the our expertise is going to be uh, celebrated in uh, june uh, that is where uh, we are completing 75 years and uh, we are not uh, new to india also we are a very bold company people who are in the field of building will definitely know what is uh, fronius because uh, we started uh, the operations along with the company by name uh, uh, lasnan tubro with the association and later on in 2013 in, uh, in india we started uh, uh, coming out separately and forming a company by name uh, fronius uh, india private limited and uh, today Uh, the global uh, strength of uh, the company is more than 5,440 employees, and uh, you can see in India that we are more than uh, 150 plus. So, Fronies India is uh, the uh, one of the subsidiary of uh, Fronies International, and we have more than 34 international subsidiaries, and uh, we do not have anything other than in Austria the manufacturing facility. We have uh, the place uh, which is actually uh, uh, like uh, Sutlad. Uh, like uh, talheim where the rnd is uh, located then uh, these are all the places where uh, we are located in austria and uh, you can see in other places wherever there is no small circles we are represented by more than 60 plus uh, partners around the globe and uh, if you can see there uh, uh, there is a blue circle which denotes that more than 93 percentage of what we manufacture is being uh, exported so that is what uh, a small uh, in a nutshell about the company and uh, moving on further uh, into the next slide we will be able to see uh, uh, the new facility which is uh, uh, coming up in a place called bosri uh, in uh, pune we have already uh, have our operations in a place called chakan and also we have regional offices throughout uh, india delhi we have an office and uh, we have an office in uh, Uh, Kolkata. We maybe have an office in uh, Ahmedabad. Uh, then we have office in the south, Chennai. So this is how uh, we are uh, throughout uh, the uh, Pan India. Our presence is there, and the building. What you see is uh, uh, the upcoming facility, uh, our own facility at uh, uh, in a place called Bhopri in uh, Pune. So moving on to the next slide, uh, what we do and what is our expertise. So many of you, gentlemen. Uh, you'll be knowing that uh, you are using your uh, two wheelers so if you can see here uh, there onto the first picture you'll be able to see uh, uh, i'll i think i should use my okay anyhow you'll be able to see the motorbike which is of royal enfield make 
which is actually uh, totally uh, the frame is welded by uh, Cronier's equipment and uh, everything is robotically controlled and uh, we are there uh, not only for Royal Enfield, almost uh, we are there for uh, KTM, uh, our presence is there in KTM bikes, over once a KTM bike is welded by a Cronier's uh, equipment, Four has got uh, the vehicles from Hero, uh, the vehicles from TVS, uh, these are all a uh, few companies I can name many but uh, because of uh, we have to move on to the next level of uh, the four wheelers, the people who are uh, Owning uh, Volkswagen cars in India, 100% is welded with uh, Cronier's equipments. The Hyundai cars are 100% welded with uh, uh, Cronier's equipments. The Kia motors, uh, the latest uh, uh, equipments are all cars are all welded with uh, Cronier's. And you can see the next picture, which is of a uh, uh, shell, a uh, high pressure vessel, uh, LNT. We have, we have been associated with LNT for a very long time, and uh, LNT uses all of our equipments. It is a leading engineering giant in India. And uh, you can see the uh, the fourth one, which is the Chandrayaan 2 mission. We were a part of it also. Uh, because of India, I will not go into the depth, depth of it. Please understand that uh, we have been there in uh, uh, space. Uh, we have been there uh, below in the sea also. So if you can see, if you are happen to travel in the metros, which are made by Alstom, Alstom uh, ma machines, uh, there with Alstom, uh, uh, all the coaches are all welded by uh, Cronius. This is all of stainless steel. Whoever happens to travel by uh, the metro, which is of uh, Alstom or Make, which is all welded by uh, Cronius. Also, you can see one more image of a, a peacock there, which means that uh, the welding can also be used for art. And uh, welding is as such is an art. And there are many people who are pursuing uh, uh, this uh, profession as an art also. So that is where uh, our equipments are being used. Uh, they use uh, the waste materials and they make uh, uh, various uh, shapes. I would say various uh, like uh, peacock, like lion. Uh, so it's all depending upon the imagination of a person who actually wants to make. So this is how uh, it can be made. Then if you see the next slide, uh, you can see an yellow good vehicle, which is nothing but uh, the JCB. Uh, you can see the vehicles which are of uh, like uh, the equipment which are made like in uh, Caterpillar, it's totally welded by uh, Pronius. And uh, next, uh, You'll be able to see one more, uh, the Brahmos, which is also welded with uh, Cronus machine. Then you can see down, uh, if there are uh, airports. In airports, we are present. Uh, then uh, in the submarine, the nuclear submarine is welded by uh, Cronus machine. Then we build uh, the uh, Sarvatra bridges, wherein uh, the aluminum bridges are used for crossing uh, the rivers. These are used by the defense, which is welded by Cronus. The aircraft carriers are actually welded with uh, Cronius. I will not go into the depth of it because of uh, the non-disclosure agreement. I just want to only tell you that uh, uh, the welding is not uh, uh, what you see in the day-to-day -day life. But welding is there for uh, all these high-end uh, areas. So this is what I would like to tell you about uh, uh, our expertise uh, in the field of uh, the uh, division which is called as uh, perfect welding. So moving on to the next uh, slide. You'll be able to see what Ronis India offers to the welding fraternity. We actually conduct webinars like what we are doing it now. We have our own webinar platform, not through Zoom. We actually have a webinar platform wherein we can conduct. We are conducting one presentation for more than a thousand people. So we have contacted in this challenging time. We have contacted more than I would say twenty thousand plus people through our uh, webinars, free webinars. I think many of you would have also known that uh, if these information comes in the LinkedIn platform or maybe to word of mouth or through associations where I would request you all to participate and uh, get to know the knowledge of uh, the welding. Moving on to the next slide, you will also have uh, one more uh, information uh, for the uh, welding fraternity. We want to actually uh, improve the level of uh, welders we are actually now calling the welders as uh, joining specialists. We have formed an elite club for them and uh, we have given them an opportunity uh, through the Facebook, uh, through the uh, LinkedIn, uh, through the Instagram, all those social media platforms wherein they have to give uh, only a missed call. If you know some people who are in the field of welding, you can inform them and uh, they will be able to join this elite club and they will be able to get a lot of information uh, 
regarding the welding uh, uh, developments, advancements. And there is also a chance for these people to win some uh, exciting prizes. So these are all uh, uh, the initiatives what we do for the welding fraternity and we want to elevate them as a joining specialist because the name welder, people feel that uh, it is a kind of a, a lower grade of a social status, but it is not so. It is actually, they are actually the joining specialists who are actually uh, making us uh, uh, day in and day out uh, or to travel, uh, to bring uh, water in the pipelines. There are many things uh, we can uh, keep on telling them. Uh, we can uh, list them. But what I would like to tell you is uh, the welding is a very, very niche field. So we are actually giving this kind of uh, offerings to the welding fraternity. We have given in English. You can see in the regional languages. Some, uh, you can see onto the right side of the slide where you can see uh, Hindi. And on top, uh, if somebody from the south, uh, maybe they will know it is actually uh, Tamil. So these are all the various uh, languages in which we publish. And then we want the people to get into the joining specialist club. Moving on to the next, uh, what is there for the students? You also can see onto the slides where we have uh, the Pronius Weld and Win uh, uh, kind of a weld education app, which is there onto the App Store, the, the App Store, the Play, the Google Play Store, and you can actually register uh, uh, through the uh, link in the Play Store, and uh, you will be able to uh, actually understand how you will be able to know about welding because there are a lot of quizzes. There are a lot of areas where you can virtually show a bean on plate, that is a welding on a plate, or you can join a fillet weld, or you can do a single V butt joint. I only request the student, uh, uh, the fraternity, to actually uh, get into such kind of things we have uh, for them also. Move on to the next slide. I will come to the topic now. Uh, we have explained about the company in few slides. We have also told about uh, the various offerings. Now we will understand what is there in for uh, the today's topic, which is nothing but uh, the wire arc additive manufacturing. And now you are able to see a titanium flower, which is actually uh, welded with the titanium wire by a manual GPAW process. So you can understand that how it is possible. I, have to, I took this picture from uh, this Patent Institute of uh, Ukraine, uh, that is in Kyiv, wherein uh, people have started uh, uh, doing such kind of uh, arts also, which is very much possible when you want to make it, uh, uh, your uh, uh, innovation is actually the limit. You have ideas, you can bring in such kind of uh, uh, image, uh, such kind of solid uh, 3D uh, uh, components, like uh, what you are, uh, this is the base for uh, the uh, buyer art collective manufacturing. Moving on, understanding about the technology of buyer art collective manufacturing, we have to understand about the history. So you can see the IP position, that is the, uh, intellectual uh, patents uh, which has been filed from uh, uh, maybe in the year uh, I would say uh, uh, to my knowledge uh, in 1926 uh, Baker has patented this uh, particular uh, 3D kind of uh, printing for superimposing uh, various layer on layers uh, with the help of a molten metal. So it all started in the year 1926 itself. Later on uh, after uh, 40 years uh, in 1970s Mitsubishi actually started using the subarc welding process and also the electro slack process and sometimes they were using the GTW process also for uh, making the functionally graded balls. I don't know, some of you may be knowing what is a functionally graded material wherein actually you will be able to make uh, uh, two, three types of composite metals. I'm not talking about composite uh, ceramics. I'm talking about composite uh, metals. These are also possible to be made with uh, the additive manufacturing. Then in 1983, uh, there was a structure which was made for more than 79 tons. This is also recorded in 1983. This was actually the IP which was made. Moving on to the next slide, uh, which is the uh, uh, in the 90s, we have seen uh, uh, Prince and Weiss uh, have made a, uh, filed a patent uh, on understanding about the CNC milling and the shape deposition manufacturing. And uh, uh, some of you know that uh, the Cranfield University, which is in UK, which is actually associated with Cronius, and uh, they have actually come up with various components and these are some of the components what they have made and uh, under the able guidance of uh, Professor uh, Stuart, uh, Stuart Williams, he is actually uh, leading the entire uh, uh, lab, lab of uh, the additive manufacturing. He has also visited our facilities at uh, Bengaluru and uh, they are actually going on with a very, very high level of uh, 
this uh, additive manufacturing research works. Various R and Ds are still ongoing, and they have started way back in the nineties itself. And uh, we are also their partners in terms of technology transfer, and they use our equipment also. You will see in the consecutive slides. Okay, now coming to the uh, uh, metal additive manufacturing process, you have to have uh, a, kind of, a heating source for making a component. You also have to have a feedstock, and uh, you should have uh, the various kind of uh, either you can use a beam process, you can use a laser beam, or you can use an electron beam. Uh, or uh, uh, the uh, we will discuss about the other one, which is the arc, which is going to be discussed today. So generally, what happens when you use laser beam or E beam? What happens is you have to use either a wire or you can use the powder. But once again, uh, depending upon the level in which the powder is blown or powder is actually kept in a bed, you will have a different kind of uh, processes, which is called as selective laser melting. Many of you will know that uh, uh, the general uh, 3D printing, uh, 3D metal printers. Which is actually uh, small in size, but here we are talking about uh, the bigger components, which can be done by laser, uh, which is actually the selective laser melting. When you use a blown powder, we call it as a selective laser cladding. Then uh, the electron beam, e beam process uses once again uh, the powder and wire, wherein you have processes like Arcam and uh, Riskiaki. But one, what is the limitation here in the laser and e beam is the cost and also the safety. What is to be followed? So what we have done. We have moved on to the next level. On to the right, uh, you will be able to see with the help of arc. Today, we are going to discuss with the help of arc how we are going to use the GTAW process, that is the TIG welding process, or the GMAW process, the MIG welding, or the plasma process, and a wire, and you make a component which is actually called as BAM, which is nothing but wire arc additive manufacturing. So today. We will be not talking about the beam processes. We will be focusing about uh, the wire arc additive manufacturing process because this is uh, the process which is of a very very great interest uh, in the uh, industry and also in the research fields. So I would like to actually talk about uh, this in a uh, slightly uh, more explanatory mode. So you can see here on the next slide, wire plus uh, when you use a wire, you need a pillar for making any component. And you also have to have a, a process where it is actually used, uh, like a GMAW, GKW, or plasma, and uh, you can make a component. So you can see whenever you want to do a welding uh, in a very bigger uh, range of component size, then you need a continuous feeding. By manual welding, you can create a small flower, which I showed you in the very beginning. But when you want to make a, a aircraft wing, you want to make a titanium uh, landing gear. Then what happens? You need to have the wires which are coming out uh, through a, a feeder. So you need a filler wire which is coming through feeders, and uh, it should also have wire diameters starting from. You can use a wire diameter starting from 0.8 mm up to uh, even our experience says that we have gone up to 1.6 mm. And uh, when you have the wire feeder, when you have the machine, you should also have one manipulator. Here, what I refer to the manipulator is nothing but a Robot, a robot which is having a six axis, and you can also have an additional two axis in terms of like uh, your uh, positioners, and then uh, a turntable and also a rotating table so that you will be able to make uh, a three dimensional parts. So basically, what I would like to tell you here is uh, when you want to make uh, a component of uh, wire arc continuous manufacturing, you need to actually uh, have uh, your power source, your wire, and also your robot. So you will not be able to actually weld on a manual uh, uh, way. That is what I would like to tell you here. Moving on to the next uh, essentials of uh, the metal uh, additive manufacturing system, you will be able to see uh, the research inputs which are actually uh, given by means of like making a uh, 3D data of any uh, geometrical figure what you want to make, convert it, and then actually uh, convert it to an STL file. Then actually do the slicing. Then making the path planning, and then uh, you feed it to the robot, and the robot will actually uh, make the component which is there. Uh, you can actually make your own component which is there onto the uh, bottom. You are able to see some photographs of some ball bodies which you have made, and uh, this is how uh, the IPs can be done on the control system softwares, or maybe you can do your own uh, uh, code generation for the robots, and then you can program. So this is how uh, you can do. And today. 
uh, there are many institutions uh, in India, they are doing a lot of work on the additive manufacturing. They have gone to the next level, which is called as the hybrid layer manufacturing. What is nothing but, uh, you, you can see one box onto the right side, which is de defined as the additional functionality, which is nothing but, uh, you can also make the component and at the same time, you can also machine it. So this is what is the letter system. Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, IIT Delhi, uh, sorry, IIT Mumbai has already gone into a, a lot of developments in the uh, hybrid layer manufacturing, which is going to be the order of the day for the future because you can make a component, but end of the day, when you want to machine it, you have to machine it uh, online, which is very much possible when you have an additional functionality with the same machine, you'll be able to do the uh, layering, layer manufacturing and also you can do the uh, machining. So that is what is happening uh, in this uh, additive manufacturing industry as such. And also you will now see the content of my presentation will be uh, uh, dealing about uh, the introduction, then we will discuss about uh, what are all the melting rates with respect to the uh, uh, GMAW process and also with respect to the uh, 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 CMT BAM, which is actually I'm going to talk to you about the process which is called as a cold metal transfer. And uh, I will share with you my experiences on uh, the various microstructures, uh, the mechanical properties test, the chemical analysis test. And I will also show you one more application wherein we have made a, a small uh, uh, fan blade, which is actually uh, to show you that how uh, uh, onto a thin uh, fan we'll be able to deposit uh, the BAM uh, at the ideas begin BAM. So this is what is uh, the content. So moving on uh, to the introduction, uh, we will discuss about uh, some uh, components on uh, the wind turbine uh, component, uh, sorry, the water turbine components. Then we will also discuss about the melting rates. We will discuss about the advancements and cold metal transfer and also the comparison of various other GMAW process. So moving on to the screen and then uh, you can able to see a GMAW BAM for water power turbines wherein you can see a Pelton turbine. Wherein uh, generally what happens is this Pelton wheel, I think many of you are engineers, you all will know, you would have studied about the Pelton wheel, which is actually as such uh, when it is used in the hydropower stations, the Pelton actually is used for uh, the producing the electricity and when the Pelton wheel, the water impinges on the buckets, see what happens is uh, the bucket gets worn out. Why the bucket worn out is? The bucket burns out because of the sand and silt which is coming along with the river because of the erosion, it gets worn out. So what happens there in general, they actually have to build up only the buckets and then we will be able to use it again after doing the balancing. These buckets are size will be more than three to four meters in diameters. So if for making this component uh, uh, once in a while, it takes at least six months for casting and machining and balancing. Many things are there. Instead of that, only the surface of the buckets are getting built up and this technology was used, was used uh, in the year uh, 1990s itself. Uh, and uh, you can actually uh, uh, Google the word mm -hmm. micro -gas. It's a trademark of uh, Adrid's uh, Hydro. They use uh, our equipment uh, for this build up uh, in the 90s itself. There are more than uh, 400 and plus uh, turbines which are working all over the world. And then Hydrid's Hydro is the name of the company and uh, they are using, using this for a very, very long time. So this is what uh, is the introduction of uh, the uh, commercial uh, uh, way in which uh, the wire arc additive manufacturing was uh, used uh, in the 90s itself. So this technology is actually called as uh, uh, micro gas. Okay. So moving on to the next slide, uh, you'll be able to see onto the screens about the comparison of the melting rates. Initially, I talked to you about uh, laser beam process, EBAM process, and uh, what we are going to discuss today is the arc process. So when you see the comparison of deposition with the help of steel wires, we will be able to achieve uh, with the laser process maximum up to seven kgs. But with the GMAW, the process limitation, so far we have been trying with the single wire, we were able to achieve four kgs per hour. With steel, uh, this was the level. With aluminum, we had gone up to 1.2 kgs per hour. With titanium, we have once again gone up to 3.7 kgs per hour. But uh, the uh, understanding from uh, this result is we will be able to use even twin wires. That is, uh, we will be able to have two wires in the same nozzle wherein we will be able to increase the deposition rate even to 8 kgs per hour. And uh, we will be able to even outperform laser cladding uh, methodologies. So this is what is the comparison which is very clearly emerging from uh, uh, this study. Moving on to the next slide, you can actually understand about the uh, how the layer height is uh, made, de decided. 
all these resolution depends upon the exact width to the height ratio but uh, this is uh, the bam process you can see the graph very clearly the layer height uh, starting from 0.1 mm 0.5 mm 1 mm 2 mm 3 mm like that in the x axis and the resolutions are on the y on y axis where 0.15 0.75 and things like that moves on so what i would like to tell you here is uh, in bam process we will be able to have a high resolution when it is best at 1.5 times the layer height we will see what is layer height in uh, the consecutive slides then coming to the next slide what process hardware we have to use is from this uh, particular graph you can understand the layer height is uh, generally decided by means of a uh, uh, process terminology which is called as the build rate that is a uh, per kg per hour of weld deposition suppose let us say for example you take a deposition of uh, layer height of 2 mm that means you will be able to deposit around uh, uh, 4 kg per hour that is what is the findings what we have got from the uh, uh, this slide uh, where we have understood that uh, the maximum melting efficiency of uh, the build rate that is the kilograms per hour of deposition rate is directly proportional to the square of the layer height if you want to make 1 mm then your build rate goes up to uh, 1 kg per hour if you want to make 2 mm the build rate goes to 4 kg per hour if you want 3 mm that is with laser and things like that we will be able to go up to 9 kg per hour also that is what is the inference uh, what we have made from uh, our uh, understanding and it is also practically uh, which has been studied we can move on to the next slide where uh, you all will know about the 3d printing metal printing which is called as additive manufacturing wherein you can only make components which are of uh, smaller in size and one more disadvantage is uh, you will not be able to do the repair in the 3d printing once you feed the uh, uh, process you will be able to get the component at the end in between you will not be able to do any kind of correct corrections whereas with wire arc additive manufacturing you will be able to have very high melting rates which i told uh, up to 4 kg per hour you will be able to do repair you want to stop in between you can stop you want to do the repair you can do the repair you want to make a huge piece because in a in a in a small attitude printer you will be able to make maximum of 1 meter by 1 meter size uh, component otherwise uh, if you want to make a 3 meter long uh, wing span or you want to make a big uh, wall body all those things are going to be very tough with uh, 3d printers so wire arc additive manufacturing comes in uh, use uh, when you want to make a huge work piece and uh, you want to make a high level of automation that is also possible with the help of uh, wire arc additive manufacturing and then you will also have a very very low cost when compared to the 3d printing only the only criteria what you should keep it in mind bam requires a reduced arc energy and a stabilized droplet transfer so you can understand why we require a reduced arc energy and a stabilized droplet transfer that is the i'm talking about the process which is being used for the particular uh, bam has to have a very very reduced arc energy we will see how it is uh, helping us in the next slides then we can see the advantages which i told you in this slide i would like to tell you that uh, bam can be done with uh, uh, particularly not only in uh, india globally it is being done with uh, cold metal transfer only you can take many case studies which are available in the open source uh, platforms you can see cmt is the only technology which is called as the cold metal transfer i'll explain about the technology later but that is only used for uh, the additive manufacturing other than that we will also see some experiments uh, some components which are also done with the pta process the plasma transferred uh, not the plasma transfer arc i'm talking about the plasma arc welding process paw process and then uh, we will also understand about the high deposition rates are possible only by uh, mig and uh, plasma the second thing is uh, we will be able to weld, uh, weld any material you want to weld the titanium it is possible you want to weld steel possible i'll show you an examples in the coming slides but uh, one more important aspect you should remember is the main important aspect is uh, given in bold which is nothing but uh, the ptf whenever we talk about making components uh, because additive manufacturing what i am going to talk is uh, uh, opposite of the subtractive manufacturing that is nothing but uh, subtractive is nothing but when you want to make a component uh, when you when you actually take a block or maybe you take a bar stock you put it in a lathe machine and you make a component but what do you do there you actually remove material so that is actually called as 
subtractive machining or subtractive manufacturing there what happens is you suppose you want to make a component of let us say uh, let us say around uh, 1 kg you need to take a component at least uh, the bar stock at least for 5 kg so here the buy to fly ratio will be 5 but in case of aerospace components what we are talking today is going to have buy to fly ratios not more than 2 suppose you want to make a component of let us say 1 kg you will have to take a material which is only up to 1.5 kg so that you will be able to make a, a buy to fly ratio of uh, uh, between 1.5 to 2 so that is what is very important here and uh, our experience we have made components more than 3 meters long and diameters of 250 mm plus we will see that in the coming slides yeah so i was talking to you about uh, the cold metal transfer here you can see what is a cold metal transfer which is nothing but uh, a droplet transfer which happens in uh, the uh, gmaw process which is a modified uh, dip transfer process where the arc energies are reduced to a greater extent in terms of arc energy if i want to tell in absolute values you will have 50% lesser arc energy when compared to the conventional process and uh, your droplet transfer becomes very very stable and that means you will be able to have a scatter free weld deposits so we will see some videos where you can understand uh, how this operates uh, here only thing i would like to tell you there is a movement of the wire which happens between to and fro that is the wire moves forward reverse forward reverse so that what happens the molten metal goes to the is thrown to the base material so this droplet transfer happens in a way where actually the wire retraction is happening so this is a very patented uh, technology which is available with us uh, which is ronius and you can understand more when you actually see a small video on that uh, the coming slides okay coming to the uh, uh, absolute values i would like to uh, you to pay attention here in this slide uh, wherein you can see the last column where uh, we will be able to mention about the arc powers with the various processes and the uh, cmt there is one process which is called the cmt gap bridging process and cmt cycle step process gives you the lowest of the arc energy so that is why we are able to use these processes for the uh, uh, wire arc anti manufacturing so moving on to the next slide very important slide wherein you can see a comparison between 11 processes this is a comparison made by uh, the uh, uh, national institute of occupational safety and health so this is the magazine uh, which is uh, the manuscript is published on a open source platform wherein you can see Cold metal transfer has got uh, the lowest of uh, the fume generation rates. That is the milligram of fume generated per linear meter of welding. You can see 91 milligrams of fume is being generated per meter of welding. When, when compared to uh, the one which is at the last uh, row, where you can see a shielded metal process, wherein you get around 876 milligrams. You can see such a difference is possible. only by the cold metal transfer which is being used for uh, this process globally so this is a report not made by me this was a report i i have given the source also you can actually take a view on to the uh, uh, google uh, where you can see an occupational uh, health and uh, safety magazine uh, manuscript which is available uh, in the internet you can see uh, this study done which very clearly gives you an overview that this is the process which can be used for uh, uh, the dam without any kind of uh, i say any kind of ill health to the person who is actually doing the welding moving on to the next uh, i was talking to you about cycle step you can see the weld beads of uh, cycle step here wherein uh, you'll be able to see uh, like a tig welding i'll show you a small video in the next slide then uh, i think it makes you understand better i'll play the video i don't know how it is getting stream my doctor shiv can uh, tell me whether it is okay Okay, sir. I I will. Are you able to see the streaming? Yes, yes, sir. where the wire moves forward and backward where uh, the molten metal gets transferred 
so this is how it is being done and you can see on to the next frame This is what is uh, possible uh, with the help of uh, the uh, cold metal transfer, wherein you will be able to have a weld bead like a TIG welding, and you can also see the macro of uh, the penetrations. So this is what is being used, uh, particularly for uh, uh, the uh, additive manufacturing process. This methodology, which is employed for uh, the additive manufacturing, we'll see some components which are made. You can see some of the flower bases, which are of uh, various. Uh, Shapes you can see with the one which is made with bronze wire, the one which is made with uh, aluminium uh, magnesium wire that is the 5000 series. Then you can see a, a, a base which is made of uh, uh, steel. Then the one which is on the top right extreme, uh, you can see a uh, 308 that is the stainless steel, and the one which is at the bottom, which is actually made of uh, the tie alloy, which is the only alloy which is being used for uh, uh, many aerospace applications. And you, this is what uh, where uh, we will be able to use uh, this alloy and do some studies. I will show you some kind of uh, studies also uh, in the next slide. So what I would like to tell here is uh, you'll be able to have uh, any shape, and uh, for that you need a robo, and you have to you have to have a filler wire, and you can actually make uh, any shape. This is to show that uh, uh, what is possible with various kind of wires. Uh, I've shown these uh, structural elements. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Uh, we will actually go into this wire, which is very, very important alloy for the aerospace industry, which is the TIL64 alloy, which is the titanium aluminum vanadium wire. Uh, I would like to share with you our experiences uh, with respect to the microstructure, with respect to the mechanical properties and the uh, glow discharge optical emission spectroscopy images. And I will also talk to you about uh, the machining of uh, the particular component, what we made and also the surface roughness properties, what we have achieved with the help of the profile meters. Uh, we'll share this with you in the next slides. Okay, in front of your slides, you'll be able to see a ball, uh, which is made out of uh, this wire, which is the titanium wire, where you can see uh, the layer which is manufactured and the microstructure. So you can see uh, uh, one, two, three, four, the grain sizes in various uh, areas. The only issue there is, uh, there is, uh, you will be seeing on the next uh, uh, bigger microstructure, bigger magnification, where you can see a very, very coarse microstructure, which is like a kind of an acicular microstructure. And you can see the grain growth in various locations in the Z direction, which are actually like a needle-like shape, which we call it as an alpha prime or alpha martensite kind of a structure. Normally what happens when, whenever you see some structures like this, your mind, maybe whoever is working on metals, will know that this is going to be of a real, some kind of an issue because the needle-like structures uh, always create some kind of an, uh, brittleness in this uh, entire structure. But uh, to our experience, when we had a structure like this, uh, where the grain has actually grown towards the length of uh, the area where the heat gets dissipated, we will be able to see the mechanical analysis that we have done with it. We have done the wire cut of all these samples and we have tested with respect to uh, the uh, Sharpie and uh, also the impact. You can see the tensile values where uh, the data sheet values were 870 MPa, we were able to achieve uh, in the X direction 844 as well that, and then in the Z direction, we were able to achieve 894, even better than that of the tensile strength of uh, the alloy, whatever we have used, uh, which is the data sheet value. And you can see the yield strength, which is 825 MPa, we were able to achieve uh, close to around 754 uh, MPa, and the elongation values were also very, very higher than that of the wire what we have used and the impact energy what we have uh, uh, found out was uh, close to 12.5 and 13.3 which are the wire what we have used. So this gave us a very good confidence that though the microstructure uh, was actually showing some kind of an alpha prime uh, kind of a bottom side kind of a structure, we will be able to achieve uh, a mechanical properties which will be better when they do the heat treatments and then uh, this is actually give us a very high confidence that we can use this alloy for various other uh, actual applications, commercial applications also. So coming to the next uh, study of uh, the, uh, uh, the amount of, uh, generally uh, what happens is uh, all these elements like titanium, 
aluminium, magnesium, all those alloys have got a very high affinity towards uh, oxygen. So what happened is we want to actually study what is the level of uh, the oxygen content uh, in this uh, particular component, what we have made. We have made a component which is there shown on the uh, slides where we have achieved close to around 0.11 Pisabi, the target which was supposed to be 0.18. So this gave us further more confidence that uh, the level of uh, the uh, oxygen content was only onto the surface. It did not go inside. So the oxides were very, very passive layers on the surface and there was no additional input of oxygen which has actually gone into the uh, entire depth of uh, the profile what we have made. So this also gave us another one additional input that uh, what the process what we have taken is very, very right. Moving on to the next uh, another important aspect of our study which is nothing but the surface roughness of the component what we have produced. It was already matching uh, the casting uh, Accuracy is the RZ average values of 100 to 1000 micrometers of casting, forging, and also we were able to meet these two methodology of processes. And the BAM was also giving close to around 100 to 1000 micrometers. And our experience is we have used different diameters of filler wire. When we use a lower diameter of a filler wire, we will be able to have further more control on the surface roughness. You are ridges and valleys, uh, that is your, uh, uh, the undulations can be further more controlled when we actually do a, a study with the help of a, a lesser diameter wires. I'm talking about the filler diameter which we are using. Okay, moving on to the next slide. You will be able to see on to the slides uh, where we have done a milling. You can see as if it is mill, it is made from an original solid block. There was absolutely no defect and uh, when we actually do this size of a component from a solid block, we have to at least use uh, close to two milling cutters and uh, we have used around 2.5 hours of processing time. But when we use a BAM, when you use a process like uh, the layer manufacturing, we were able to use only one mill cutter, end cutter, end mill cutter, and we were able to process this particular component just in 25 minutes time. So what I would like to tell you here is uh, because, uh, because people who have already worked with the titanium, they know how difficult this is to machine. But when we do it with this BAM process, we had experienced a low tool wear, we have uh, less processing time, we had a very low cutting volume, and uh, we have uh, already have used uh, very, very less cutting forces, particularly with respect to uh, usage of uh, the end, cutter, end mill cutters, because uh, we were able to use it only one end mill cutter, and we were able to actually process the component from this from the dam so this gives us further more confidence that uh, if you want to machine also it is possible and you will be able to get a very uh, uh, trouble free kind of a deposit onto the structure coming to the next experiment of uh, building a small uh, uh, impeller blade which is of thickness 0.8 mm you can imagine how thick how uh, uh, thick is a 0.8 mm you can take a few of your uh, uh, sheets you are drawn sheets and then you can keep it to between two three layers then that will be the thickness for a uh, 0.8 mm so in this 0.8 mm also we have done a deposition of an inconel alloy the inconel is nothing but a nickel chrome moly alloy which we have welded uh, around close to uh, 15 layers and uh, we were able to achieve these layers almost equivalent uh, to one over another so this was also possible with the help of uh, the uh, wire arc additive manufacturing where we were able to make uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, layers with the help of uh, this kind of uh, BAM technology and that too with the process which is called as CMT cycle step which we have already shown you in the small video in the past. So what I would like to tell you here is uh, even you will be able to join uh, sheet metals of uh, even 0.4 mm thickness also with the help of uh, gold metal transfer. This is another uh, additional input I am trying to give you now. And you will also be able to join your, uh, this is the only technology in the uh, fusion building process where you can join steel to aluminium. So these are all uh, the additional uh, benefits of uh, the gold metal transfer, which is the process which is used here for uh, the uh, wire arc additive manufacturing. Okay. So moving on to the next uh, experiment, uh, some more uh, components wherein I want to show you that these are all components which are made uh, wherein we can show Deposition rates of 1.5 kgs, uh, and uh, you can see the machining, how smooth it is. Deposit after the deposits, 
and then moving on to uh, one more uh, experiment uh, where in uh, with the help of the uh, uh, tomography or uh, scans where we have found out that uh, absolutely there is no issue on the deposition except for uh, one or two pores at the junction where there is a curve area where we want to actually move the entire uh, bending torch in the curve area there was some kind of pores which are formed uh, and these pores uh, uh, are small uh, uh, small diameters which are less than uh, uh, 0.3 mm and this was very well within the norms and as such the entire layer was homogeneous and this was accepted and this is how uh, we were able to actually study the uh, tomography and also understand about uh, the homogeneity of uh, the structures what we have manufactured okay hope uh, i'm able to be uh, okay with the speed or uh, should i slow down or uh, any any comments i'm i'm trying to just do a check dr shiv anybody online hello hello are you able to hear me yeah yeah hello yes sir yeah yeah, yeah. okay 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 I, i just wanted to do a the check that's why I yes, sir. Please okay. go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Okay, fine. Now, uh, few more examples uh, I would like to share uh, to with you regarding this uh, where are country manufacturing uh, uh, methodology, where you can see uh, on this video uh, the, the experiment which is done at uh, Cranfield, where we have made uh, the kind of uh, wind tunnels. You can see the video. I hope it is playing on your screen. wherein we can make uh, such kind of uh, experiments wherein uh, the build up can be done uh, continuously yeah so this is uh, giving you an overview about how uh, Uh, even uh, starting from a uh, hollow range uh, to a solid solid range uh, the uh, uh, depositions can be made uh, with help of uh, the uh, cold metal transfer and uh, this is actually a carbon steel deposition where you can see absolutely no spatters this is all uh, as well that uh, uh, videos and you also can see uh, this kind of uh, depositions okay moving on uh, to the next slide we'll be able to see some more slides examples of uh, various uh, projectiles these are all after machining wherein uh, these projectiles are used for uh, the warfare these are all the projectiles which are actually loaded onto the aircrafts which is uh, the fighter jets you will be able to see these kind of components are already been produced uh, just for your information that uh, this is not uh, a new technology i just want to tell you that uh, already this is commercially being used uh, we are not able to show you exactly a commercial component but i will show you certain components like this uh, which gives you an fair idea that uh, this process is being used for uh, the manufacturing already and you can also see onto the slides uh, next the views this is an aluminum component where is a, where in a cone has been uh, welded at our laboratories uh, then there is a cross structure which is welded then coming uh, to a small video of an aluminum uh, wing rib you can see uh, this is also once again a cranfield uh, experiment wherein uh, uh, they have already made a commercial uh, component which is an aircraft uh, wing model which is actually welded with uh, an aluminum alloy wire and you can see how uh, two robots were able to actually weld at a time and then uh, you can see the layer getting built up continuously so these are all the methodologies which are employed with the help of uh, cold metal transfer and uh, you'll be able to see a job like this also so you can see a photograph on to my next slide wherein you can see uh, a wing rib which is actually made uh, with the help of uh, the uh, cold metal transfer okay so this is what is an aluminum uh, wing rib experiment uh, which i showed you a video also and uh, this is how uh, it is actually uh, yeah okay yeah. so this is how it is actually uh, deposited onto an aluminum plate
wherein you can keep on depositing uh, any number of layers. So this is what I would like to show you on to the BAM experiments. Moving on to the next slide. BAM aluminium, some more components onto your screens. These are all some more components uh, which are made of uh, aluminium. You can see uh, the undulations, how close uh, the undulations are not very, very high. Uh, the ridges, ridges and valleys are very, very uh, low. This is also possible with uh, aluminium alloys by the parameter optimization. Moving on to the next slide, one more uh, component, aluminium component, which is there. Then moving on to the next slide, uh, some more uh, aluminium components, which are just uh, for information that uh, these are all the various shapes, which also can be formed uh, with the help of uh, the aluminium alloys. Then coming to the uh, titanium alloys, you can see such kind of components, which are nothing but uh, the uh, titanium uh, tie alloys uh, and uh, wherein uh, a landing gear uh, was made and the wingspan uh, stiffener is made. These are all the various components which are actually made commercially for uh, the uh, BAM applications. Moving on to the next slide, uh, you can uh, make uh, any kind of a vein, formation of any vein, or you can make any kind of a closed structure, box structures, anything is possible. It is all left to uh, the imagination and uh, the application what uh, anyone wants to try and what are uh, the parameterization or the characterization what uh, anybody wants to uh, actually do a research. This is one field uh, wherein you have plenty of opportunities of various metals. And uh, the summary is uh, like BAM is uh, basically what you have to do is in BAM, you have to develop or uh, generate a CAD model with the help of your AutoCAD or Solid Edge or whatever it is. You feed the particular software to the uh, computer and the computer is uh, actually feeding the entire STL, uh, converting into the STL uh, basis. Uh, and then from that, you convert it to an, uh, uh, the uh, path planning and then uh, or in between you do the slicing and path planning and then you make a robo controller to actually do the entire welding for you with the help of uh, uh, the uh, uh, computer generated uh, uh, cam softwares. So this is how from the CAD model, you will be able to uh, make a final layer also with the help of uh, the RAM process. So, so today you need not worry that it is very difficult to do the programming. It's becoming very, very easy with the help of the various programming interfaces which are available today. Moving on to the next, uh, you can also have uh, the trend is uh, basically shifting towards uh, the titanium, steel and aluminium. And uh, the thing is like uh, lightweight is very important and that too in an aircraft industry, either people go for titanium or for aluminium alloys and we can make very big components with the help of uh, the BAM technology. You can also build on uh, existing blanks. Suppose you, want an, you have an existing blank you'll be also able to build it on uh, additively. And uh, this is what is the trend which is growing towards uh, in the wire arc additive manufacturing area. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, uh, what does Fronius uh, assist? You can see our objectives and our factors. We as Fronius uh, will be able to support uh, any of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, colleges, the institutions, the R&D, R&D, the R&D groups for the solution providing with help of uh, giving uh, the power source and the supporting in terms of the entire product life cycle, in terms of technology transfer, in terms of producing components uh, with respect to the total cost of productivity, that is nothing but the TCOP. Uh, we will be able to give all the details in terms of like forging a long-term relationship with the customers. And we will be, uh, as we have an in-depth uh, application knowledge, we'll be able to pass on to uh, the benefits of the researcher or maybe the organization who wants to actually invest on that. Uh, these kind of uh, wire arc additive manufacturing technologies. Moving on to the next slide, I would like to show you some of the examples. We can actually have uh, a ready-made uh, uh, kind of a Fronius uh, multi-welder, which is actually there, which is a system platform, which is readily available for uh, the institutions and uh, for the uh, companies. We also have uh, the circular welders. We can make uh, any component uh, which can be of a circular, then uh, we have the circular welders, Fronia circular welders. We have uh, the robotic cells. We have an initiative which is actually called as the robotic uh, uh, cell for education and research institutions. We have uh, a separate cell which can be given. And uh, with that cell, we will be able to uh, actually utilize for uh, the particular application or a particular research program, whatever uh, uh, the planning is being there for uh, the institutions or the researchers. 
Okay, moving on to the next, uh, you'll be also able to see uh, some of the platform softwares which will be able to support you with respect to the, uh, the human machine interfaces or maybe with the visual components and also some of the other uh, master cam and robot master will be able to assist you in making uh, this uh, uh, study on the viral therapy manufacturing and the research work on this. So where it is being used, uh, you can see on the next slides where all it is being used. Uh, you can see the industry sectors where in uh, automotive industry uses uh, the 3D material uh, components. You also use it in uh, the yellow wood industry, which is the uh, uh, commercial uh, off highway that uh, the off highway vehicles, which are actually called as the uh, yellow wood industry vehicles. We also use some components in the uh, uh, the uh, transport industry, that is the general machine uh, metal manufacturing industry. Then we also use it in uh, the various engineering industries, uh, which are there uh, in the offshore, where we will build components like valves, like uh, is, there are some components which have already started building on the, the inconel alloys, which are being used in the oil and gas and all the offshore industry. So these are all the sectors where uh, you can think uh, your uh, particular research work can be oriented towards. Okay, coming to the uh, conclusion and the forecast. So what I would like to conclude is uh, BAM uh, has got a very high melting rate and we can use a cold metal transfer which uses the reversing of the wire electrode and uh, this process variant is, uh, is used for the continuous uh, production process and this also can be used for the pre-process for milling and BAM is one technology which is in the pledging stages and uh, it is already being used in the niche applications also. Though there are a lot of research work is going on but still it is already being used in very many applications. So with this, uh, I would like to end my presentation uh, with the help of uh, my last slide wherein I have my email ID wherein you can also write to me if you are interested in knowing about more and also we can take some few questions uh, during this session also provided uh, if Gaurav Choudhury and uh, the team is there. Over to uh, Gaurav Choudhury, please. Uh, thank you so much, Sasi, sir. Uh, even we are... Uh... Uh, ready for the questions. If you have any questions, you can write down in your chat box. Then I can read out, uh, read that out, and uh, Sashi sir can able to answer you. Please. Yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, should I check my chat box, or uh, should I have to? Should you read out? I will read out, sir. I will read out for you. Okay. Okay. So kindly start. Thank you, sir. Uh, the yeah. students can ask question. Sorry, sir, please come again, sir. Uh, if the voice was breaking. Hello. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah, okay, maybe I can start with a uh, couple of questions. Uh, for example, uh, number point is. Uh, for WAM procedure, we did we don't need to prepare the filler metal specially. So I assume that the standard filler wire available can be used. Uh, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, uh, basically, what he asks is uh, he wants to know whether uh, the standard conventional filler alloys can be used for uh, wire arc additive manufacturing. I hope. Uh, that is what he is asking. Uh, yes, will, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will not answer this question uh, very, very straight because there are certain kinds of uh, important uh, findings uh, we have to understand uh, from uh, the conventional wires which are available. Basically, what happens is uh, one is the filler wire, no doubt about it. The other important aspect is the process. Suppose, let us say, for example, there is a conventional wire which is available for aluminum in the market and he wants to that the gentleman who has asked this question wants to weld it for BAM. He should be very careful in selecting the power source first. He will not be able to actually do justice for BAM if he uses any kind of a power source with a, any kind of a filler alloy. There are specific fillers available for particularly aluminum alloys which are available for the, the 3D printing. So we, uh, the, the, that is for the BAM I am talking about. We have specific fillers, but if we, if the gentleman wants to do uh, uh, a filler alloy uh, deposition with titanium alloy, 
then he can actually use a regular uh, alloy which is available in the market or suppose the gentleman wants to do a stainless steel then he has to uh, uh, he has to be very specific what is that he has to make and what kind of a grade he wants to select so it all depends upon what kind of an application he is doing what kind of a base material he is welding and what kind of pillar he wants to select and what kind of a process he wants to introduce he can use uh, uh, gmaw that is uh, cmt wherein he can actually have uh, very good control on the heat input and uh, he can use the conventional alloy also there but so uh, so this question is a relative question and uh, if he wants more info we will be able to assist him if he is in particular with respect to the aluminum alloys we have to be very careful yeah that's what i would like to tell over to you sir hope i have answered okay thank you sir so there are a few questions in the chat box gorav can you take these questions gorav hello uh, shall i I'm, shall i take it i am able to read the questions uh, should i take it up yeah yeah, yeah sure sir sure you can yeah, take you yeah, can take yeah. see uh, yes please yeah uh, yeah i am able to see the uh, chat box uh, the i will be able to there is a question uh, which is i will start from the last question what are all the disadvantages the effects in mam process what is the disadvantage is uh, the this gentleman wants to know what is the disadvantage in bam um yeah uh, disadvantage uh, in the bam if he really wants to uh, uh, actually understand more about bam i would actually tell there are no uh, much of disadvantages there are a lot of advantages with respect to the uh, e bam and the laser beam process the electron beam and laser beam process are very very expensive but whatever we are talking uh, about uh, bam with help of gmaw gtaw and plasma are further more uh, cheaper and also commercially being used in uh, very many companies so what i say is uh, if you really want to see disadvantages i would only see there uh, uh, this is still in the research stage there are many areas of development for this uh, uh, commercially provided uh, uh, people uh, will like to actually uh, Uh, get into this technology more and uh, will be able to produce more of uh, components from uh, bam but there are no disadvantages but there are some process uh, i would say uh, i would not say as disadvantages if suppose i want to use a component in uh, aircraft industry then as such welding the component i will not be able to use i need to do some pre processing i would say uh, i would uh, like to say that there are some kind of post processing after building up the component we need to do some kind of uh, uh, further uh, um, i would say heat treatment process something called as heating the hot isostatic pressing some kind of uh, uh, some more uh, test has to be done and then uh, you will be able to use the component in the uh, high precision areas so that is what i would like to say but as such there are uh, no much of uh, disadvantages i would say uh, Uh, but one more disadvantage is if you want to have a very very complex shape like i would say you have uh, a circular uh, you you can still make a circular but there are uh, critical uh, intricacies in the particular component then we have to be very careful about the programming that should be some disadvantage any process will have advantage and disadvantage but uh, i would uh, always take bam as a process which has got more of advantages rather than uh, disadvantages Okay, to just the gentleman, I think I have answered. I will move on to the next question. Do we use any shielding gas in gum process? Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the yeah the, the thank you message has come from uh, Mr. Uh, yeah Mr. Yadav ji. We will uh, move on to the next question. Do we use uh, shielding gas in gum process? Of course, uh, the process what I discussed was uh, uh, the GMAW process, which is nothing but a gas metal arc welding process, wherein uh, Uh, absolutely there is a requirement of a shielding gas there is no doubt about it depending upon the wire let us say for example i am using an aluminum wire i use a argon shielding gas i use a titanium wire i use a argon as a shielding gas suppose i use a steel wire i use a argon uh, co2 as a shielding wire we call it as argo shield 8020 i use it as a shielding gas so once again uh, the shielding gas will be decided upon uh, uh, the kind of uh, various uh, Uh, bias what we use but we need shielding gas no doubt about it okay 
there are some cases where in titanium we also need a trailing shield uh, okay the gentleman i don't know he is uh, from engineering uh, uh, college or is a uh, uh, kind of a other person but i would like to say that there are many other uh, mechanisms of shielding is required very much okay thank you moving on to the next question uh, how gma power used as a power source how gma is used as a power source in bam yeah gma is used as a power source gma is nothing but a gas metal arc welding i need a gmaw power source for bam because i need to deposit otherwise i will not be able to use any kind of a heat source for depositing the material either i have to melt it and pour it or i need a arc welding process i need a electron beam welding process or i need a plasma transfer all process or i need a gtw process or i need a laser process so i need a process for a power source okay i think i have answered i will move on to the next question how do we provide vertical structure in the component yeah very good yes there is a question from a gentleman asking how do we provide vertical structure in the component yeah i would rather say instead of having a vertical structure in the uh, component we need a homogeneity uh, that is a homogeneous structure which goes straight that is what i uh, uh, the gentleman uh, is referring to let us say for example i showed a test piece where i have made a uh, ball how to make this so that is what is the question so when he has a process which has got a stable uh, arc transfer mechanism it is very easy to actually uh, make a maintain the verticality or maintain the uh, parallelity it is very much uh, easy but uh, you need to actually do some uh, parameterization in the machine in the welding equipment and then you can achieve a, a homogeneous structure which is also vertical or it can also have a, a, a kind of a, a hang like a, you are a, not only a simply supported straight uh, kind of a deposit it can also have a, a, a different kind of a structure also which is very much possible like uh, you can see on my screen a mascot where uh, there is a man whose hand is made and uh, for that there is no support but still we are able to build that is how it is possible that is because of the process stability the arc stability of the process hope i have answered that you not only vertical you can also have horizontal structures you can also have uh, inclined structures you can also have a cantilever structure there is no limitation when uh, once when the process stability is achieved we will be able to have uh, any kind of a structure i hope uh, uh, i have answered uh, to that question of vertical structure okay what about porosity problem there is one question uh, from uh, the same gentleman what about the porosity problem i have already shown you the porosity is nothing but uh, uh, a well the kind of a defect which comes only when there is a insufficient shielding gas please understand gentlemen porosity in any welding comes because of the main reason which is the insufficient uh, shielding gas or maybe excessive shielding gas suppose let us say for example you are using a 1.2 mm wire the general thumb rule goes like 1.2 into 10 liters per minute that is 12 liter per minute of the gas shielding has to happen let us say for example the welder or the technician who is there keeps uh, instead of 12 liter per minute keeps uh, let us say 6 liters per minute then there is an insufficient uh, flow then there is a porosity coming into picture suppose let us say instead of for uh, 6 he keeps 20 liters per minute then there is a turbulent flow in the exact uh, gas so what happens there also you will have a kind of a very high amount of uh, porosity so you should have a laminar flow so the porosity is one area which has to be controlled by means of uh, the gas shielding in particular you have to check the environment particularly and you can avoid this uh, problem of uh, porosity hope uh, mr ankit patel's uh, question is answered okay fine i'll move on to some more questions i have some okay i have another 5 minutes i will take one or two more questions one second i think uh, there's no more question yeah uh, if anything is there uh, they can write to me also you can see my screen i have an email id also you have uh, mr dalip uh, who is the hands on guy experience uh, who is a person who is our uh, application engineer and also we have uh, in delhi our uh, gaurav choudhury uh, who is also there uh, who is known to uh, all your uh, professors he will also be able to assist you with all uh, details and uh, over to dr shiv please
Ya. Yeah, Dalip, uh, I think you have given your email ID also. Kumar Dart. Kumar Dart Dalip uh, is the person who is the person who is there. You can actually, he uh, is uh, from Delhi, he will be able to assist you. His email ID is uh, Kumar Dart Dalip at Kronius.com. K U M A R dot D A L I P at Kronius.com. Please, please write to uh, these email IDs also. Okay. Okay, and over to uh, the organizers, please. Thank you. Hope it was an interactive session. I think uh, there were some good questions. Uh, we are really motivated uh, by seeing such questions because uh, people are also attentive. Good to see that. Okay, what to sir? Uh, hello, sir. Uh, yeah, I was just disconnected for a while. Okay. Uh, I have rejoined. So uh, I hope the students' question have been answered. I believe. Uh, I have just one more uh, question sort of thing that uh, in a typical uh, say if we talk about a metal 3D printer uh, additive manufacturing so normally it takes into metal powders and uh, then there is a model in CAD model is sliced uh, and then there are XYZ coordinates in which the metal is deposited. So here I believe that in case of WAM uh, the XYZ coordinates are taken care of by the robotic arm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd like to answer your question, uh, uh, Sarji. What you are talking is about a 3D printer. Basically, 3D metal printer, first of all, you cannot make a, a big size components, which I already told you. Near net shape components are not at all possible. Okay. But, there, but there you can actually do the planning with the help of uh, the software. But here, uh, in terms of wire or additive manufacturing, you have to develop uh, your uh, CAD model and convert the CAD model to the uh, STL file. Then actually you do the uh, 3D slicing. And it can be a unique slicing or it can be a multi-directional slicing. You are, can use the open source softwares like Cura. Then you will be able to make your 2D uh, path planning, which is by, from uh, the various uh, MATLAB uh, softwares. And then you can actually feed to the robot controller uh, through uh, our uh, equipment and then uh, it will actually do the building and uh, uh, the uh, instead of your x y z axis uh, with the help of the manipulator you have six axes and when you have uh, the another two axes also available when you have a uh, position so totally you have a, a eight axis uh, uh, availability wherein you will be able to make a three dimensional uh, com uh, components yeah hope i have answered Okay, yeah, I, I got your point that uh, because we have a robotic manipulator at our disposal, so we have basically a bigger area available for uh, metal deposition. Uh, whereas in a in a three D printer, uh, even if if it is a metal three D printer, we are still restricted by the size of the bed. Exactly, exactly. You are right. You uh, hit you hit the target. And uh, if you have a, a robotic manipulator, can I know what is the make of the uh, robotic manipulator and what is the controller you have? Can you tell me that? What no, I mean, uh, we don't have any, but I was basically, uh, I was just comparing both the, the methods, like uh, a typical metal 3D printer, which takes in metal powders, then some sintering or melting, then the final deposition in the form of a workpiece. And on the other hand, I was comparing your method, which is basically, uh, it is a robotic manipulator, which, which holds the electrode or the filler material and then doing the deposition. I was just comparing both the methods. Okay. 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 Fine. Fine. Yeah. I was comparing the methodology. Yeah. The methodology part I was comparing. Got it, sir. Got it. And also, um, I would like to know, for example, the metal 3D printers are quite expensive. Uh, like the typical metal 3D printers can go upward of rupees 1 crore uh, quite comfortably. Uh, 
uh, but if we if we discuss about the waam setup so it is basically the the robotic manipulator and then the controller then your welding welding set uh, so i believe in any case uh, this whole setup uh, the first investment if we talk by some small or medium enterprise so i believe that the the first investment should be should be relatively lower in case of waam if i am right yeah uh, I, you are very rightly said uh, the uh, uh, you have actually come to the point basically uh, the 3d metal printers whatever is available in the market for example uh, uh, i i don't want to quote any competitor but i would like to say that i have seen uis printers which are available which goes for uh, a minimum 1 uh, uh, crore and above minimum that once again depends upon the bed size uh, the minimum is uh, like that Yeah, minimum is one crore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you are very right. Uh, may know to whom I am speaking, sir. I am not able to get you. Uh, you myself, Doctor Shiv. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Uh, okay. I just switched off my video because I am getting lot of problem with my internet connection. Correct, correct, correct. I think better to switch off the video. Yeah, the, the bandwidth is. Yeah. Good. Sorry, sorry, sir. I am very sorry. I am not able. It's to... okay. Uh, see, what happens is, uh, as you rightly said. Uh, Uh, the uh, investment uh, for this particular uh, BAM process will be fifty uh, percent of what you are actually going in for uh, uh, the particular uh, uh, amount. What you are talking about on uh, the metal three D printers? Yeah, you are right. You will be only able to spend fifty percent to start with. I am just giving you a ballpark figure. If you are able to invest that, any uh, I am talking about any SME or any organization, uh, we will be able to do the setup. exactly and you will be able to make and also setup. the yeah and also the waam setup is uh, relatively simpler in terms of the maintenance if we see or the moving parts it is relatively much simpler but whereas a metal 3d printer is much more sophisticated in terms of maintenance suppose you, you of course you need an ac environment uh, for uh, Uh, the 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 uh, maintenance uh, you need to be very careful about uh, handling all those things are very as you rightly said uh, very difficult process as uh, to maintain here uh, in this it's a very yeah uh, what i what i wanted to say yeah what i wanted to say that a metal 3d printer is much more sophisticated electromechanical device Uh, but if we talk about the waam setup it is still simpler i mean in terms of uh, the electromechanical system you are right absolutely you are right uh, I, i i fully agree with your point uh, dr yeah. shiv yeah 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 you are right the 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 bam process is very very simple and easy to handle very robust anybody can handle yeah yeah so okay sir i think uh, thank you very much it was a very interactive session and uh, very interestingly i i shared your uh, very first slide where you were mentioning about the at uh, fronius family i shared that slide in one of my whatsapp group that is uh, of welding professionals group uh, started by professor sunil pande so i i shared into that and uh, 10 minutes back i was receiving a call from professor pande <laughs> <laughs> can we make regards to uh, dr sunil pande sir because uh, yeah so I, i will talk to him after the session yeah <laughs> <laughs> we have been working together for a long time and uh, we have been associated in very many uh, programs uh, and uh, i would also consider him as well. okay sir yeah I, as a guru and he is a, he is a university by himself uh, and i would like to thank him uh, and also pass on my uh, regards to him uh, when you happen to meet uh, yeah i met him uh, yeah in it delhi also yeah i know him yeah thank you sir thank you uh, okay sir just as a final uh, one final thing uh, if you can stop the screen sharing i would like to do the screen sharing just for a couple of minutes i'll do that sir very much sorry Yeah, I've done it. Yeah, no, it's okay. I I will just do the screen share. I want to show something. My PhD work basically. Yeah, please. Uh, so please. is this is the screen visible? Yeah, the neutron diffraction study is very much visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, so basically when, when I was a PhD candidate at the Open University Milton Keynes, I was a full-time PhD candidate there. Uh, so basically what we did, the kind of weld pad, you showed layer upon layer, a, a big weld pad, and you machined the tensile specimens out of that. In fact, I did this same work way back, way back uh, in the year... Uh, uh, 2006 to 2009. Fantastic. Uh, I would like to see this paper because I think you have done something yeah. on the residual stress. Is it on something on the residual stress? Uh, actually, uh, within my group, yeah, uh, the work on residual stress was also being done. For example, uh, that was called as a bead on plate geometry. So they normally take a base plate, then deposit a weld bead onto that and then do the neutron diffraction across across the plate. For example, parent, then weld bead, then parent. So it gives the distribution of residual stresses across the bead. But I, my work was more on the anisotropy part of the weld metal. Anisotropy, okay, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. so we machined the tensile specimens from a different orientation in the weld pan as you showed for example you showed the the tensile specimens which are parallel to the weld bead so in the same way i machined in three different orientations and what we did uh, we basically then uh, did the neutron diffraction we conducted uh, in situ neutron diffraction like the tensile specimen was being deformed in the in the engineering diffractometer and the response of the crystallographic planes were recorded something like that very good very, good. Uh, very interesting actually speaking uh, in the BAM process uh, whatever uh, we are doing uh, we can actually do an uh, residual stress analysis uh, and you can actually indicate the favorable uh, stress traits uh, which are existing in an additive manufactured component uh, uh, by the welded fabrication route, uh, whatever we are now talking about, uh, can be a real uh, case study and a, a thesis uh, which can be submitted. We, we would like to make some kind of a science uh, of the research and also applied research on this particular topic also, since you have an idea about uh, neutron diffraction uh, techniques. Yeah, thank you. Nice. To yeah, we, we can discuss this. Later on, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sir. Thank you, thanks for sharing, sir. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think uh, we can now wind up this session. Uh, so, thank you very much. Thanks to the Fronius family for uh, giving us time, uh, sharing their valuable uh, insights, and uh, the engineering students and uh, my faculty colleagues they are immensely benefited uh, from this presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you all. The students can join later at 12 o'clock as usual. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dilip. Thank you, Gaurav. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you, thank you Dr. Yeah. Shiv, sir, for uh, giving us opportunity. And we will be very much happy on sharing these uh, knowledgeable sessions with you and other colleagues also. Thank you so much for this. Okay, time. thank you very much. Thanks again. Okay, goodbye all. Uh, have a great day. Okay, goodbye.